In the year 1969, archaeologist David Sturdy began a landmark dig at Levens Park, South Lakeland, in the northwest of England. Assisted by a brigade of local students, his initial excavations were among the first instances of rescue archaeology in Britain. A decade earlier, aerial images of the park had revealed numerous lumps, bumps and ditches, undoubtedly archaeological features. With the approach of bulldozers and pavers to build a new road, the time to investigate had finally arrived. Aerial images identified three distinct areas of interest within the park. A trio of medieval rabbit warrens, a Romano-British settlement, and notably, a series of intriguing, low-lying circular mounds. Initially, Sturdy presumed these mounds to be typical Bronze Age barrows. However, one mound, previously catalogued as Site B, quickly showed itself to be far from ordinary. During Sturdy's three-year dig, he and his students revealed a complicated, multi-period enclosure. They found two concentrically built stone circles erected around a densely packed rubble ring. Several smaller circles were built inside this outer enclosure, each comprising a thick band of rubble surrounding a small pit. The enclosure contained at least four skeletons, with their burials containing early Bronze Age pottery, dating to around 2500 to 2000 BC. At the time, people believed this site was a small Bronze Age farmstead, which had been converted into a burial ground. Little of Sturdy's dig reached publication, and for decades, his theory stood as the best explanation for the site. Fortunately, a 2021 study published in the Archaeological Journal brought original notes and photos of the dig out of the archives. These documents showed that the site was not a farmstead as once thought, but rather a complex ring cairn. I first learned about ring cairns in my late teens. My friends and I were exploring the hillsides north of Ullswater in the Lake District. It was there that we stumbled upon the cockpit. Having visited many Neolithic stone circles by then, I was curious why this one was so different. Why did it have no entrance? Why was the middle cobbled? It all seemed like such a mess, but with its striking situation, appearance and alienness, I couldn't help but feel inspired. In hindsight, the answers to my questions were obvious. The cockpit was not a stone circle. Rather, it was an early Bronze Age ring cairn. Such sites date to around 2500 to 2000 BC and were formed by piling loose stones into a ring, forming a low enclosure. In essence, they were a ring-shaped cairn, a cairn being a pile of stones. I hope you'll excuse the wind and the traffic up here. I'm high up on the balls. The North York Moors, and I'm here to show you something a little bit crazy, a little bit prehistoric. Join me as I take you on a little journey through time. Come on. I've walked about a mile down the road, only to realize the parking space. I don't know how well this is picking up, or my voice for that matter, with this terrible wind. Ooh, classic car. I don't care about classic cars, I care about cans. Cans being mounds of stone, literal monumental piles of stone, because these things are monuments. Put up in the landscape to be seen, to be appreciated from a distance on ridge lines like this. Oh, and by the way, there's bigger ones. This rather unassuming earthen mound you see right here is actually made of stone. It's covered over with earth, but it's what's known as a round cairn. It's where people around four and a half to 4,000 years ago would have buried their dead. This example here 
The big one I've just shown you. That one. Hey. <laughs> As I was saying, examples like this one here, the better preserved examples are the ones that really stand out. But there are actually hundreds of these things. There's actually one right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It seems almost unimaginable in our Stonehenge-obsessed niche where big stones reign supreme that megalithic stone circles could remain buried and left unknown in isolation. And yet, across the north of England, hundreds of large, complex and well-preserved ring cairns have remained little studied and relatively obscure. Nonetheless, the spotlight recently shone on ring cairns thanks to a remarkable publication. A study published in Nature Communications in May of 2023 saw researchers re-examining bones from the Levens Park ring cairn. It was revealed that one of the four people buried within the cairn had been infected with the plague, the earliest known instance in Britain, dating to around 2000 BC. The results of this study have led some to speculate that the transitional period between the Neolithic and the Bronze Age was more tumultuous than first thought. The period was already understood to be rather cataclysmic, with some studies suggesting up to 90% decline in the population between 2200 and 1800 BC. There are many theories as to the cause of this decline. Many point to possible warfare, famine, and even invasions from the continent. Add a major plague pandemic to the mix, and the outlook appears rather bleak for those Neolithic Brits. It is, therefore, interesting to note that ring cairns, complex enclosures used to process the dead, were built in astonishing abundance across Northern England at that time. You, once again, meet me out here on the North York Moors. I'm with a big old standing stone, somewhere where you can press up against and absorb some extremely potent orgone energy. I'm going to have to stop doing that voice now because with all the takes I've had to do, I've absolutely annihilated my larynx and I can't stop coughing. I bring you to this standing stone on Danby Moor, not because this is prehistoric, they actually think that this is medieval, a medieval way marker, and I'll, I'll cut to a little picture of the cross on this thing. Instead, I bring you to this standing stone because it marks the northern edge of a rather large ring cairn. And I'm going to try and trace my finger around the enclosure now. I don't know if you can see that, and I'm purposely not going to show any drone footage of this thing, just to show you how hidden ring cairns are in the landscape. That right there is a sleepy little village of Danby. And it was there that in the 19th century, an antiquarian called Atkinson came and he went all along this moor, low Danby Moor, and he investigated the prehistoric monuments up here. And it was in this ring cairn right here where he found numerous early Bronze Age pottery. It was inside enclosures like this one that early Bronze Age people would honor and cremate their dead before being interred in cairns like the one I showed you earlier. Danby Moor really is one of the maddest places you can come as a prehistorian. Look at that little chamber in there. I thought that was a clearance cairn. That's did I think, I'm gonna run to this one so I don't waste your time. I thought this was also a clearance cairn, but it's got a, a curb, a megalithic curb around it. It tells me it was probably more of a designed thing, a intentional monument for burial. And there's the ring cairn. So we've got burial monuments and funerary rituals happening very close by. Funerary rituals, by the way, just means funeral. While ring cairns appear to have had a function similar to Neolithic stone circles, their inner areas are often found to contain human remains. This can range from numerous cremations having occurred on site to whole skeletons buried within their inner area. 
Moreover, unlike comparable circles of stone, early ones dating to the Neolithic for instance, ring cairns almost always lack an entrance. Their use as a congregational space is not obvious, as they are often found nestled into the landscape, away from prying eyes. Ring cairns are almost always found in upland regions. The North York Moors in the northeast holds the lion's share, while the Yorkshire Dales in central England and the Lake District in northwest England have fewer but grander examples. There are three varieties of ring cairn in England. Embanked stone circles are ring cairns topped by low stone circles. These tend to be quite small, with little room to congregate inside. In Cumbria, ring cairns like Casterton, the Kirk and Potter Fell have an average diameter of 18 metres. Similarly, in the Yorkshire Dales, circles such as Harkerside, Harland Moor and Ox Close have an average diameter of 16 metres. Curved ring cairns are flanked on their inner and outer perimeter by megalithic stones. These cairns are quite rare and have regional varieties of their own. For example, on Pfizer Thwaite Moor in the Yorkshire Dales, there are at least three curved ring cairns with burial kists at their centre. The cockpit mentioned earlier is a massive example of it, which appears to have acted as a ceremonial enclosure akin to a stone circle. And the now somewhat well known Levens Park ring cairn, mentioned at the start of this video, is completely unique, having had smaller curved ring cairns added to its interior. Finally, Concentric stone circles are the rarest of all, only existing on the outskirts of the Lake District. Five canonical examples survive. Birkrig, Oddendale, Gunnerkeld, Low Kinggate, and Shap Beck. You can also find a possible outlier at Jochenthwaite in the Yorkshire Dales. These bizarre monuments combine the Neolithic megalithic stone circle tradition, dating to around 3200 BC, with the curved ring cairn. They comprise a megalithic stone circle, forming an outer circle and a curved burial mound, forming their inner circle. Excavations at these sites, which have been numerous, have revealed curved ring cairns between the inner and outer circles. This is best seen at Birkrig, near Ulverston, in South Cumbria, where its ring cairn remains visible on the ground surface. Without this context, it may be easy to classify ring cairns among the hundreds of Bronze Age burial monuments across Britain. But considering their place in the archaeological landscape of the early Bronze Age, things begin to fall more neatly into place. Around 2500 BC, the widespread construction of big ceremonial stone circles seems to have paused. Over a brief span of time, there was a change in the way people organised ritual landscapes and the kinds of monuments that populated them. Early Bronze Age people built hundreds of funerary monuments among Neolithic ceremonial landscapes. Sites such as Castle Rig Stone Circle saw the addition of burial mounds. The uplands, too, once marked by a few communal tombs, were adorned with thousands of individual burial mounds. Generally, it appears that this was tinged with extreme morbidity. Now, Factor in that possible plague pandemic and the massive drop in population around that time makes complete sense. More than representing an obscure variety of stone circle, ring cairns should, perhaps, be better recognised as the defining prehistoric monuments of the early Bronze Age. However, there does remain plenty left to learn about both ring cairns and the period they belong to, and cliché visions of rituals, solar worship, and other such activities may be too simple to fully grasp these sites. The chances are, if you do find yourself at a stone circle in northern England, a high likelihood if you were watching this video, it's more likely a ring cairn. <laughs>